Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on Alien Skin Exposure X4. Please remember to share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to import your images from a memory card using Exposure X4. I really should correct myself right off the bat. Those of you that are familiar with a program like Lightroom know that you just can't navigate with Lightroom to an image on your system and start working on it. You have to actually import the image. You have to go through a formal import process using Lightroom to import the image into Lightroom's catalog. Well, the cool thing about Exposure X4 is it doesn't use a catalog. And as I demonstrated in my last video, you could just navigate to wherever the images are on your system and you could start culling them, uh, rating them, and processing them. And technically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to copy images from a memory card. This is really handy. If you're out shooting and you have a memory card full of images, you could use Exposure X4 to copy the images from the card. And because you're using Exposure X4 to do that, you're able to put them anywhere on your system. You could create new folders. You could rename the files. You could edit metadata, like add your copyright and address information if you want, all from within the copy function the copy from memory card function of Exposure X4. So it technically does not use an import function. Now, with that corrected, and before I begin, just let me mention real quick that after my first video in this series, the folks over at Alien Skin Software contacted me and they gave me an exclusive discount code for you, for you to use if you want to purchase Exposure X4. During the checkout process, use the discount code Anthony Morganti and you'll save 10%. So thank you to everyone over at Alien Skin that made that possible. Now, I mentioned we're going to be copying images off a memory card. And if you look at my desktop, you can see that I have a memory card plugged into the computer. It's a Nikon D850. Uh, memory card or memory card from my Nikon D850. And usually if you have Exposure X4 open and you plug a memory card into your computer, the copy from memory card dialog box will immediately open. If it doesn't open, all you need to do is go up to the top file menu and then down to copy photos from card. And you can see the copy photos from card dialog box pops up and you'll see right at the top it found my card, Nikon D850, that's what I have it named, and I could begin to import or copy those images off that card anywhere on my system by specifying uh, just a few things on this dialog box. Now, Exposure X4 is capable of copying from more than one memory location or memory card at once. So if you have multiple memory cards plugged into your computer, you could hit this plus sign and you could then navigate to where the cards are and then you'll be able to uh, simultaneously copy all those images from multiple cards. Now in this case I only have the one card. Now you have a couple options when you're doing the copy process. You could delete the originals after copying them. I don't want to do that. I want to keep the original images on that card. I don't want to do anything until I actually back them up. So I'm going to copy them from that card onto my system, and then later on I'm going to back them up. And then once I'm satisfied I have multiple backups of the images, then I'll delete myself. I'll delete the images off the memory card. So by default that isn't checked. The other option you have is to only copy new photos, so that way you're not duplicating images. And by default that is checked, and I'm going to leave that checked. Now, where are we going to copy them to? I mentioned you could copy them anywhere on your system using this section of this dialog box. Now, the standard location is the pictures folder on your computer. Now, I really don't want to put them there. I'm going to put them somewhere else. But if you go to the right, you'll see this little gear here. And it has a default location, pictures, and then a subfolder called year. 
and then a subfolder to that folder called month day. And if you click on that, you'll notice then it's going into the pictures folder into a subfolder called 2019 and into a subfolder with the month and day. Now I could add different folders by clicking add here. I could do original name, suffix, and so on. Or I could add just another subfolder by clicking here. And you could see there's the other subfolder and I could give it like, let's say, you know, I don't know, custom text if I wanted to. No, I don't. So I'm going to get rid of that. So as it is now, the images would be copied off the memory card. They'll go into my pictures folder and they're going to go into a subfolder of that folder called 2019, which is the year, and a subfolder of that folder called February 26, which of course is the month and day. Now, I don't want them in that pictures folder though. So I'm going to put them in an other folder. So I'm going to click here. And I remember in last episode, I have a specific folder for my alien skin exposure X4 images. It happens to be on my Lightroom drive and it's right here, exposure X4. So I want it to go in that folder. So it's going to go into the X Exposure X4 folder, but inside of that folder is going to be a subfolder 2019, and inside that folder is going to be a folder February 26th. Now, if I find I'm doing this all the time, I could create a preset. I could click up here, and I could save as new preset, and I could give it a name, and then it will be available in this little gear for me all the time, so I don't have to go through the process of finding the, the folder I want to put them in, and so on. Now, during this copy process, if you want to make a backup of the image, you could click this box and then you could click this little folder and then navigate to the folder on your computer where you want the backup image to go. Now, in this case, I'm not going to back them up during the import process. I mentioned I'll do that later myself. Now, file naming. Uh, do you just want to leave the original file names? If you do, don't do anything here. Don't check this. If you want to rename the files, click there and by default you could see it's going to be photo and then it's going to have a four digit number and be sequential not sequentially numbered starting with number one now I could add more fields to this so I could add the original name to that I could move these around in different order just by moving it I could put photo at the end number at the beginning if I want to get rid of um, one of the fields, just click on it and then click on the little garbage can and you'll get rid of it. So you could really uh, name them any way you really want. Um, and you again could click this little gear and you could create a preset if you find you're naming them, um, your files uh, very in a very consistent way all the time. You could create a preset for this section of the copy photos from card dialog box. Now I mentioned um, in the past, I think I don't like renaming my folder uh, photos, so I'm not going to check that. Now, I mentioned you could edit metadata, so we're going to click there, and you could see that we could add the copyright info. So I'm going to add my my name, and then I could add um, you know my name, my email address, my my postal address, and all that information. I could add keywords. I could put it into a collection. In a future episode, we're going to talk about collection, or I could even uh, have a preset. One of those presets we touched on in our last episode, I could actually apply that preset to the image as it's being imported. Now, I don't want to do any of that, but let's say, um, for and usually I would fill this all out, but for the sake of this video and time, I'm not going to, but usually I'd have this completely filled out with my name, email address, postal address, PO box number, and um, that's it. And then I would do that every single time. So I could create a preset for that as well. So I could save as new preset and it will then, you know, you give it a name and you, your preset a name, and then you don't have to type that in every single time. So down here, you could see we have 35 source files, 35 to be copied, zero to be deleted. That's because I did not check that delete original files after copying. If I have that checked, you could see it says 35 to be deleted. Well, we don't want to delete them from that card. Remember? And it's 35 are being copied. That means I have no duplicates. So I'm going to be creating two folders inside of the Exposure X4 folder, which is already on my system. I'm going to be creating during this process a 2019 folder. And then inside of that folder, a February 26 folder. And I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to go through and start copying the images. And you don't have to wait for the copy process to be done. You can see it goes relatively quickly. If 
you're going through the images, you're looking at them, and you see one that you'd like to work on right away, let's say. Let's find one I want to work on. Doo -doo. Let's say you like that one. You want to work on that. No, I don't like that one. Let's say that one. You like to work on this one. You could just start working on it and, you know, processing the image and go on. So it's very easy. Now, I just want to show you real quick. I mentioned that these are on this Lightroom hard drive. It's in the Exposure X4 folder. There's the folder it created, 2019. Remember, Erie Basin Marina was last week's episode. I created that folder. So the tw And there's the date. And there's our images. They're all raw files. And they're all right there. So it did it very easily. Um, and again, you could just start processing the images from this point forward. Or you could cull the images. So you could go through, you could give them either, you know, a, a flag rating, a star rating, a color label. And in our next episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and share this video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find thousands of totally free videos and articles to help you with your photography.